This is Harbor Freight's survival slash camp saw, and it costs $5. It's got a high carbon steel blade, an ABS handle, a locking mechanism, and seven TPI, which is seven teeth per inch. However, it does have a few issues, but I think we can resolve those in the house. Before we get into fixing the saw's deficiencies, I guess we should answer the question as why. <laughs> why do we care with this little saw? Well, what I'd like to do is to put together the ultimate survival tool, which is what I have here with my own personal ones, and that is three tools. Good high quality ax, a good bushcraft knife, a fire steel, and a silky saw. Now this is expensive. We're looking at 200 for an ax, 200, 250 for a knife, 50 for a saw. I mean, it just gets a little bit ludicrous if it's not something you do every day. Can we reduplicate this from the uh, Harbor Freight product line? To perform the survival saw enhancements, we're gonna need a few things. Loctite 243, some ballastol, a sanding block with some medium grit sandpaper, some grease, I'll use white lithium, use what you have, a number two screwdriver, a small piece of shrink tape, and some suitable lanyard material. The main issue with a Harbor Freight survival saw is the lock. When I first opened this up, it's supposed to, as the blade extends, lock into place and to prevent this blade from coming back on your hand and folding on you. But if you look there closely, if you open it up, it doesn't lock properly, so you can easily open the blade back up. What appears to be the problem is that this little locking bar here is rubbing on the side of that ABS housing. We've got a number two Phillips screw there, stainless steel, slotted and Phillips. That's a nice touch. It's, you could adjust the tension with whatever tool you have in the field. You could use a dime or a Phillips. Looks like it's stainless steel, so that's nice. It's most likely not going to corrode on us. And this is a fastener with a collar on it. So what I mean by that, if you look at this, you'll see that there are only threads on half of it. The collar is used whenever this needs to be a bearing surface, so that knife blade needs to hinge on that. You don't want threads, so that's why they do that. We should be able to remove the blade. It seems to me what's causing the latch to not function properly is that the tolerance is in here, that this this release is sliding back and forth here, hinging on a roll pin with a spring. Initially, I thought we would take that out and, and sand that down and machine that surface a little bit so that it didn't drag, but the more I look at it, I don't think that's gonna work. I think what we're gonna need to do is to do a spacer. I've got these tiny washers, and they may be too thick, but let's press that roll pin out. If we can get a small washer on both sides, that might be a better bearing surface and be a little bit more consistent. To remove this roll pin, you'll need a small punch, something that will fit inside of that hole. If you don't have a punch, just get a nail or a piece of coat hanger, or whatever, and just square off the edges. It's gonna go through this ABS plastic. Now these bolsters here, are, they're all plastic, so they're gonna be weak, so you wanna make sure you support that on the edge before you tap this through. Leave your punch in there. Don't pull that out. There's hinges and springs in there. Here are the individual components. Pretty simple design. So this aluminum collar fits inside, and then this hinges on the roll pin, and you can see a small steel pin in there, and when the, bl when the blade goes up, it locks into that groove retained by that pin. There's a spring right here that sits in here, and the handle gives that tension that pushes against the handle. Let's you see the casting marks in there, the ridges? It's really rough. Let's smooth out both sides, machine it, and see if we can't add in a couple of small washers in there to have a little bit more precise movement. On the flattest surface that you have, like a countertop, and we're going to just a, take a little bit off of there. Just clean that up and smooth that up a little bit so that uh, it's not going to drag on us. Do both sides.
Now we're ready for our lanyard. I was thinking initially I was going to do a green one, but those two colors clash pretty bad. All right, I've got some options here. If you want to get the lanyard kit, our friends over at Microbat, I'll put a link in the description for this, um, has put these together. Just look under the Wrangler Star Kit. It gives you everything to do the military grade lanyards. All right, have you clicked the thumbs up yet? What do you think, black or tan? I'm not gonna choose one, a, a color until you click that thumbs up. All right, you know, and you know what you have to do if you want to test. All right, so what do you think, black or tan? Definitely the black, we'll go with that. So you can use any, I like the lanyards because when you put them, these knives carry really good in a cargo pocket if you wear Carhartts or such. And they're pretty nice for that. Uh, the lanyard helps uh, giving you something, kind of gives you something to hang on to. And we're just gonna do a, just something very simple here. We have a nice lanyard hole. I like these not too long. About so, like that. Maybe a little bit less, but you gotta remember to leave room for the knot. Not too much. So this is really good industrial strength bungee cord here, right? All right, take your shrink tubing. Match those ends, and then we're just gonna do a simple hard knot. Dress your knot so that the, the paracord isn't twisted, you know, that it, it, they lay side by side all the way through the knot like that, and you can dress that and make it look nice and clean, right? With about three quarters of an inch there and pull it tight as hard as you can. So far so good with our enhancements. Our blade comes out and locks in with a, an authoritative click. Much more positive, we have a good lanyard. So if we wanna carry in our cargo pockets, we have that thing or pull out of a pack, it's very nice. Now that's a pretty good paired Pretty good uh, match set right there with the Harbor Freight Axe there. And where are we at now? I paid uh, for this, um, I think it was five or five dollars, five ninety-nine, twelve dollars. So we're doing pretty good, right? I'd add those up, but I don't do math on camera. Now we have to pair it with the perfect budget knife. What knife, and I want you guys to comment in there, give me recommendations. What knife do you think? In this price point, trying to keep it low, that would be a decent bushcraft knife that we could wrap these up and have a really good car bundle. And if you want to see this in a real world test out in the wilderness, and I actually will test it more than I did the last axe, I apologize for that, 50,000 thumbs up. Come on, you can do it. Give me 50,000 likes and I will take this into the forest and we will see because uh, everything's nice in the shop, but we don't know how it's going to perform and if it's even going to hold up with those plastic bolsters after hard work. So it's up to you if you want to see that. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers. And we'll see you all on the next video. I've been trying to call. I've been on my own for long enough. Maybe you could show me how to love. Maybe.